Welcome to this new clip of the GeoMOOC, where we will address the impact of geological structures and associated uncertainties on low temperature geothermal operations. Because the energy density of hot water is low, lower than that of hydrocarbons, the feasibility of low temperature geothermal operation is challenged by two main factors. Not much investigation is usually made prior to drilling, and even small miscalculations can transform a profitable project into a non-economic one. Knowledge of geological processes and of the local geology with associated uncertainties is of paramount importance. We will base our discussion on three real-world cases. The first two are obtained from the geothermal project which is being developed at TU Delft and which has already been introduced in clip 632. The great news is that the wells are being drilled right now a few hundreds of meters away from where I am recording. We will use the Delft geothermal project to discuss the impact of sedimentological and structural heterogeneities on the operation design the scale of the reservoir and of a single well. Third case is from the well-known geothermal systems of the Alpine 4 Deep in southern Germany, where we will address the impact of structural heterogeneities on connectivity and flow from the injector to the producer. The Delft Geothermal Project is a world-class research development facility to further the understanding of low temperature geothermal systems and provide hot water to the university. The project targets the lower Cretaceous Delft sandstones, which is a hundreds of meters thick body of heterogeneous fluvial sands and clays located at about two or three kilometers depth under Delft. The Delft sandstones were deposited during a stage of rifting and have been subsequently folded before the tertiary. We now look at how the reservoir scale geology has influenced the design of the injector and producer wells. As it is typically the case, the position of installation at the surface was dictated by the location of the user, that is, in the campus of university. To minimize impact and increase efficiency, the two wells start from the same plot where also heat injection exchange and re-injection facilities will be placed. From a depth of 800 meters, the two wells diverge and are drilled in a non-vertical position to let the injector and producer wells hit the reservoir at the appropriate distance and to increase the traversed thickness of the reservoir. Along which direction should the two wells be aligned? North-south? East-west? The optimal well design meets the two main goals of producing substantial amount of heat during a lifetime of at least 15 years. The rate of flow from the injector to the producer along the reservoir is key if flow is too slow, then little heat will be extracted. But if flow is too fast, then temperatures at the producer will decrease long before the expected lifetime. The distribution and thickness of sands in the Delft sandstones is controlled by thin depositional normal faulting, leading to high thicknesses of fairly homogeneous sands on the hanging walls of normal faults generally oriented northwest southeast successions on the sides are richer in shale and therefore less connective the amount of heat extracted is directly proportional to the temperatures of the rock around the producer lower late cretaceous shortening folded the delft sandstones and brought them at different depths that is different temperatures in the air of interest, it is estimated that the temperatures of the reservoir at the top of the anticline and in the core of the syncline are 64 and 78 degrees respectively. From a temperature perspective, 
the best position of the producer would be in the core of the sink line. Here, the geometry which was adopted. The injector is drilled striking to the north and the producer striking to the east-northeast. Water will then flow in an east-southeast direction from the injector to the producer, which is about 200 meters deeper. Flow path will avoid the deeper parts of the sink line where thick and homogeneous sands are expected. The position of the producer away from the core of the sink line also avoids interference with the continuous geothermal system. Let us now focus on the impact of lithological changes at the meter scale on the well design. Wells in the regions confirm the frequent alternation of sands and shales. Knowing the distribution of sand and clays is necessary to decide the type of casing adopted. Sand intervals will be cased with screens, which are pipes with regular spaces which allow the inflow of water. These spaces, however, must be smaller than the sand grain size to avoid the grains being sucked into the well. Intervals with low permeability sediments, like shales, will be cased with continuous pipes called blinds. These resolution changes cannot be predicted and they are identified by measurements performed during and after drilling. Gamma rays are generally used to, con to distinguish between shales and sands during drilling. Density and neutral logs, less commonly measured in geothermal operations, will be acquired in Delft. Observing gamma rays logs from wells around Delft, you can identify easily the sand-rich intervals, here called aquifers, and how heterogeneous they can be. As a final case study, we discuss how the formation processes affect the reservoir scale conductivity of rocks and thereby the flow rate from the ejector to the producer. For this purpose, we will bring you to the four deep of the Alps in southern Germany. Note that similar settings are being investigated in the Swiss part of the four deep. In the map, you can see the Fordip, the Alps, and the temperatures of Jurassic rocks, and as well as the direction of the present day maximum horizontal stress. The vertical section across the basin displays the typical thickening of the basin towards the mountain belt. The targeted reservoir is composed of upper Jurassic shallow carbon rocks with variable permeability and often fractured. In the area of interest, they have temperatures of around 100, 130 degrees. The injector and producer wells were designed to hit the reservoir at a distance of less than one kilometer from each other. Operations were planned for a lifetime of more than 20 years, assuming little cooling of water at the producer during this time frame. After a few years of operation, however, temperatures at the producer started decreasing significantly. The cold water front had reached the producer well much earlier than expected. Seismic data display an area of low amplitudes oriented north, north, west, south, south, east, stretching from one well to the other. It was realized that the low amplitude area could correspond to a 100 to 100 meters thick and 1.5 2 kilometers long fracture corridor. As we discussed previously, fracture corridors are tabular bodies with a high density of mode 1 fractures. The fracture corridor, in green in this map, is oriented parallel to the maximum horizontal stress, thereby keeping the fracture open and creating a real highway for the flow of waters. Here are some important lessons from the case studies we addressed. The knowledge of geological processes and at the, of the geology at the site of the operation 
is of crucial importance to de-risk operations. And never forget the ideas are much cheaper than failed wells. On the other hand, small-scale heterogeneity has our great importance and they can be detected, can be defined only with accurate monitoring and logging.